Dangerous thunderstorms and more heavy rainfall will spread across Europe as we head into next week, as abnormally warm temperatures continue heading northward. This is going to be great news especially for some drought-stricken portions of Europe, but not so much for areas that have been ravaged by flooding and severe thunderstorms in recent weeks. One of the biggest issues that we've seen so far this month contributing to this potentially extreme weather pattern is the persistent high pressure system centered over the Nordic countries, which has basically trapped low pressure systems further south. This has left the more northeastern extremities of Europe under an abnormally warm and dry pattern, while areas just to the south and west have seen too much rainfall. We're going to talk more about this extreme weather pattern in today's forecast, as well as any possible improvements as we work our way into the second half of the month, so let's begin. We're going to begin with a soil moisture anomaly map. This really helps put this dangerous weather pattern into perspective, especially if you focus in on Germany. You'll notice a very clear division between the saturated soil conditions towards the south and west, while the northeastern portion of the country suddenly becomes much drier. This makes sense because we've had very active thunderstorm activity across the green area, while areas in the brown shade have seen very little rainfall for a few weeks. It's not just Germany, of course, because if you recall, a large area of high pressure is to blame. If we take a wider view of northeastern Europe, you can see how drought conditions are pretty widespread. Now before I do show you some good and bad news about what's coming up here in Europe, let's get a brief update on what's going on in the United States. A dangerous flood threat impacted parts of Texas and Louisiana last night, prompting a very rare high risk of excessive rainfall. Over the last seven days alone, take a look at how heavy the rain has been from Texas all the way to the Florida Panhandle. This map does show the amounts in inches, but anything shaded in yellow or brown represents 100 millimeters or more of liquid precipitation. Fortunately, we should see the flash flood threat calm down across the south, because over the next few days, the storm track is going to be shifting north. Watch as all this activity currently hitting the southern United States gradually shifts eastward before emerging over the Atlantic by the 20th. Once that's out of the way, the south will see significantly calmer conditions, while the northern tier of the country starts seeing a much more active pattern. For today, Friday, May 17th, we will see a severe weather risk continuing for the Gulf Coast, with a separate risk area over the Dakotas, which is already due to a new storm developing over southern Canada and the northern United States. A lingering severe risk will advance into the southeast U.S. tomorrow, as the storm system over southern Canada brings a renewed threat of strong to severe storms to northern Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. By Sunday, which is the beginning of next week, we should really start to see a trend towards calmer conditions for the south-central and southeast U.S., as a new threat of severe weather develops over the central plains. And then between Monday and Tuesday, we see the severe weather threat migrating towards the north and east, putting the northern tier of the country at risk for severe weather going forward. The U.S. won't be the only place seeing a northward shift in the severe weather threat, so that brings me back to what I wanted to talk about here in Europe. The high pressure system which is currently established over Scandinavia is actually going to head east, before being replaced by another area of high pressure from the Atlantic by May 21st. As these anticyclones shift, an area of lower pressure will be present between them. During this period of weaker blocking, the low pressure to the south is going to take its chance to surge northward, allowing for rain, severe storms, and warm temperatures to move in. With that being said, let's move on to my severe weather outlooks for the next few days, so you can see how this all progresses. For today, we should see the severe weather threat remain confined to the same areas, which would be mainly across Italy and to the Balkans. A couple other regions to watch include Algeria, where scattered thunderstorms are possible, as well as portions of Belarus, Ukraine, and western Russia. Things escalate quickly going into Saturday, with multiple new level 1 risk areas added. This will include two corridors, one extending from the Baltic countries down into Ukraine, and the other from Poland to Romania, in addition to other risk areas including portions of Turkey, northern Africa, southern Italy, France, the Benelux countries, and even southern England and Wales. In addition to a chance of severe weather in any of the level 1 risk areas, also keep in mind that torrential rainfall will be one of the greatest risks for many of us. Lastly, I did want to point out that I added a couple level 2 risk areas, where I personally think the severe weather threat will be a little more elevated. By Sunday, the severe weather potential will expand further, with the vast majority of mainland Europe at risk for strong to severe storms. 
A level 2 risk extends from the Baltic countries to Belarus, with another one from Poland down to Greece. And lastly, for Monday, May 20th, it looks like the severe weather risk will be quite similar to Sunday, with strong to severe storms likely affecting the majority of mainland Europe. One last thing I did want to review before we ended today's weather forecast was the precipitation totals. While some of the drought-stricken areas will actually get some help from the northward shift in the thunderstorms, many places that have already seen too much rain will continue getting it. And the unfortunate truth is that even though there will be rain reaching areas a little further north like I mentioned, the vast majority of that rainfall is going to continue impacting some of the same areas for an extended period of time, which is reflected by the map on your screen. And then if we compare that to the 10-day precipitation totals, this gets a bit more concerning. While we do see some more green covering Poland and other surrounding countries that are experiencing drought, it's simply just not enough rainfall. So like I mentioned earlier, the surplus of rainfall in places that have already seen too much of it will only worsen the flood threat. Now for photo of the day, this was a picture sent in earlier this month from Belgium, so this picture fits very well with the topic of this forecast, which has been the severe weather risk continuing to spread across Europe. If you enjoyed today's video, you'll probably want to subscribe since I upload consistently to keep my audience updated on the latest developments in the world of weather, and if you're already subscribed, make sure you leave a like to help support the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.